it pops, and it locks. This is the Dialogue Machine. You're watching Mini Web Machines, where we share small bits of code that power great user experiences. Like the other machines, it's not that much to look at right out of the box, but with some coats of paint, we can really transform it into something amazing. What's more important is the functionality here. It pops out into the top layer and it locks and inerts the rest of the page and manages focus. These are traditionally very difficult things to do with JavaScript or are often error prone in the way that components implement them. And we get that all included in the dialogue element. So let's dig into what it can do, build our own, and figure out how to animate these things and deliver great dialogue experiences. Like this pop and lock light box that uses view transitions to seamlessly go from in-page images to large gallery images. Isn't that rad? You may have seen this type of UX from APIs like window.confirm or from component libraries like Bootstrap, Shadcn or materials dialog. Okay, okay. So let's build a super basic one really quick. Let's just see the basic parts of this machine. We're going to need two things, a dialog element in the page and a button to show it. Now there's more conveniences, animations, and coats of paint you can put on this machine, of course. I mean, it's not that great out of the box, but these are the basics. So we can open it with the button and we can close it with the escape key. But what if we wanted to add a close button from inside of the dialogue? Well, let's just add another part to the machine. In this case, a form. And this form has the method of dialogue. So when the button is pressed, which its default is submit, it will submit the form, which method is dialogue, and it will close the dialogue. It's intelligent enough to know what it is that you want to do, which is close it. You can also use the enter key and the escape key and notice how focus is managed forward and backward between the element that invoked it and where it is going to. Super cool stuff. Now it's time to show you three superpowers of this machine. First, I need to save this and open up dev tools with command shift C on Mac and then click on the dialogue element and scroll to the bottom. And here, here I present the DOM penthouse, AKA the top layer. Notice how the dialogue element was inside the body element, but it's now magically projected in this place above the body over top of everything, even with a click eater backdrop pseudo element to go for you. So feature one is that the machine can be located anywhere in the page, like right next to the component that wants to open it. No portals needed here. Next is that there's no Z index battles to be had. The element is on top of everything without a Z index specified. And we'll check that out more in a bit. And lastly, that backdrop is pseudo element, also known as a click eater. It can be styled, animated, transitioned, or removed. Those three features were traditionally tough to code for yourself, and this machine brings them for free. Bun -da -da -da. The dialogue element has been baseline since March 2022 and comes pre-built with factors that were traditionally missing or super difficult to do with JS and a component library. Things like all users should be able to open and close it. It should reflect its state in the document. It should inert the rest of the page, aka be modal, aka be blocking, aka be locking, and it should be on top of everything. Let's change up the demo a little bit and look at one that has a humongously like high Z index fixed element that surely nothing could be on top of this element. It's, it's a child in the body and it's got the maximum value possible. Okay, well, let's verify that you can use the keyboard and a mouse and everything to get this open. Excellent. We can see I can use the mouse. If I tab in, I hit enter on the button. I'm focused into the trap. I can hit tab to go to the closing button. Hit OK. I can hit space bar to open it. I can hit escape to close it. We can see that this thing is very keyboard accessible. So let's open it up again and verify that its state is represented in the document. And here it is. It has the open attribute. It also has the colon modal attribute that you can access through CSS. So you have two different ways to hook into this state of being presented. Then we're on top of everything and the background can be clicked. So the page is inert for free. You don't have to do that. And Z index infinity on that fixed element is no match for the top layers. Z index zero, no challenges, no battles. Dialogue's going to win. Okay, let's chat about animating the pop and lock. And specifically, I mean transitions. So this is a crucial distinguishing factor because it means that the presentation and closing the machine is interruptible. In the middle of it being displayed, a user can hit escape, boop, and it goes away and it elegantly can be interrupted. New features were added just to enable transitions for dialogues on popovers. And it's a little bit complex. There's four pieces, but stick with me. I'm gonna break them down for you so that you know why and what you need to do to transition your dialogues 
in and out of the top layer and in and out of this overlay state. But before I talk about overlay, let's get to our first task, which is we need to animate display none to display block, or rather we want to time it with the rest of our transitions. So if you notice uh, when you add a dialogue element to the page, it's hidden by default and it's not just hidden, it's set to display none. And so a new property called transition behavior was added to allow authors to time when display is set to none or when display is set to block so that it can happen with your transitions instead of before them. So with transition behavior, you're signaling to the browser, hey, don't immediately toggle this display property. Wait a little bit of time. Okay, the second thing we need to do to transition a dialogue element is we need to specify that it's overlay property, which is special for dialogues and popovers that are transitioning from like being inline elements to going to the top layer. We need to time this with our transitions also. So similar how we did this with display with allow discrete, we will also specify the transition behavior of the overlay property to allow discrete. Okay, so the third thing we need to do, we need hooks for CSS to know when the dialogue is open or when it's closed or when it's modal or whatever. So these hooks allow us to specify the resting styles of the dialogue, the off stage styles and the on stage styles. And these are crucial for us to be able to articulate all the different ins and outs and how it transitions between those states. And lastly, we need a way to define a set of starting styles for transitions. Like if something is going from display none and wants to animate in, we need a way to define styles for that first render. What is its state in its first render as it's entering into the DOM, as it comes back into the DOM? That way it can transition from something to something else. Otherwise, when it got set to display block, it would just be immediately in the final state. But that's not what we want, right? We want a starting style to transition to an animated state. And we can do that with at starting style. New magic to help you wrangle other new magic. The web platform has got you. And good news, Yuna and I have your back too. There's multiple places you can just take our code and you can go listen to podcast episodes we have. We have podcast episode 80, which is exclusively about animating in and out of the top layer. We've got you covered. We've also got code snippets you can steal. Here's a link. Just go take that code. Okay, so that's all for this mini web machine. It popped, it locked, and now it's ready for you to take it and run. Check the show notes for links to all the demos that you saw and more, and I'll see you on the next mini web machines.